and welcome back to another photo challenge. My name is Kika and this is already week six of the photo challenge series. Very excited to see you here. Today I'm going to show you or yeah, we're going to do a little Photoshop tutorial. Essentially, I have our one video with uh, showing how to combine photos in Photoshop, but it's very old and I don't know, I'm almost screaming in that video all the time. And well, hello there and welcome to my channel. Just uh, it, it's not so great. So I thought I would do a little update and also because in some of these photo challenges I've been using Photoshop. So I want to share you really break it down step by step. So if you've never used Photoshop, but maybe you're a little bit intrigued and would like to get into it, this video is for you. I'm going to share or show you how to create a surreal self portrait. Obviously you can create anything, but before we go into it and before I share the whole process of taking the photo that I did this week, you want to know the theme probably. Mm, I bet you do. The theme this week is going to be growth. Ooh, difficult word to say, growth. Growth, yes. Growth, that growth, that thing, that little seed that blossoms into a flower, a little seed that blossoms into a tree, a little boy becomes a man, a girl becomes a woman. You get the idea. Um, growth essentially is usually stories of transformation. No! <laughs> and I thought since we're all in this uh, weird, going through this weird time together, um, a lot of us have probably spent a lot of times indoors and maybe there's a new skill or maybe you've grown in some area. So even though it is pretty sucky time at the moment, um, maybe we can turn it around and focus on something that you've learned or something that you've grown in during this uh, time. And um, I think for storytelling and for photography, transformation and trying to show that in a photo is pretty fascinating and it's, it's a nice task. It's maybe not the easiest one, but I think it's something that always intrigues people. Get them! Hey, I've been turned into a cow. Can I go home? You're excused. For my photo, I went pretty literal, as you'll see soon. But yeah, this uh, week I'd really invite you to, again, this is maybe a little bit of a self-reflectory, self-reflectory, self-reflective, it's probably more right, <laughs> um, photo theme. Um, so again, you're free to interpret this in your own way. And before we uh, get into, or me showing the whole process of how I interpret this, I again want to say thank you so much, everybody who's participating. Here are some of the beautiful creations that are under the hashtag Kika's photo challenge over on Instagram. So do make sure to put that hashtag in so I can see your work and we can come and support each other. All right, let's hit the field. And this photo I took a few months back when there wasn't so much snow and I've been waiting to share it and been waiting to edit it. So here we go. For my location for this photo shoot, I chose to have this dark cabin as my background. I'm gonna work with these bright red flowers. I also have this watering can. So I think it's gonna create a nice contrast between these colors. My idea for this is to just show my upper body. So I'm gonna try to put my camera very straight in front and try to really frame this cabin. Once I got the camera height just right and was happy with how it looked, I then first took photos of me holding this watering can. This was trickier than it seemed at first because I really tried to get the watering can so it's straight in front of the camera so you can really see the silhouette and this proved to be much trickier than I had expected. I made sure to have a few different variations and then when I felt confident I had enough material, I proceeded to take photos 
with these flowers. Now, my idea is to create a floral crown, but because this was really difficult to do in reality, I'm going to use Photoshop to make this come true. So then I took individual photos of me holding these flowers close to my hair. And I did this to make sure that the light is gonna be as realistic as possible. So I don't have to manipulate that too much in Photoshop. I took lots of photos from different angles with different flowers just to make sure I have enough material to edit when I get to Photoshop. But because I didn't stop there, no, I also wanted to have some water coming out from the watering can. So to create this illusion, because I didn't want to actually water myself because that would just be very messy and wet, <laughs> I decided to put my camera on a really quick shutter speed. And the problem that can arise when you put the camera on a quick shutter speed is it doesn't let in so much light, so it became very dark. To fix this, I instead went into the ISO and increased that. So ISO means how sensitive your camera is to light. So sometimes by increasing the ISO, you can fix this problem when it gets too dark, but you want to have a really quick shutter speed. Then I poured some water from the nearby stream into my watering can and got pouring and got clicking away. So the camera is taking photos as I am trying to get a sharp picture of these water droplets. Alrighty, go. we are ready to start editing. So the first step is to import all your photos into Photoshop. Now, because I've shot all my photos in raw format, Photoshop naturally opens them into this camera raw window. In here, I go through all the photos once more and choose the ones I'm gonna work with. In here, I might do some slight adjustments to the white balance and the exposure. So I increased the exposure slightly of these and also made the temperature a little bit warmer. Then I went through all the photos and made sure that I did the same adjustments to them all so they will look the same. The first step I always do when I have my main photo is I duplicate that layer because you don't want to do any changes to your background layer. Next step is I go into all the flower photos and choose this little select tool and then I simply copy paste these flowers into that main document. Now you can use command C or then you can also just choose copy and then go to your main document and paste that in and Photoshop naturally makes a new layer of each of the flowers. If you have a lot of layers, it's also a good idea to name all those layers because it can quickly get really messy in there when you have tons of layers and you might not find the things that you want anymore. Lastly, I also copied in the water droplets. When I'm going to start to work on separate layers, I usually like to turn off the other layers just because it's a little bit easier to see what is going on. The first step I'm going to do is to erase the background of all these flowers and crop them out. But before I do this and start to play around with my composition, I like to make the canvas size so that the ratio is approximately four by five. This is the ratio I usually do for my portraits. So I want to make sure I have my canvas size already in this size while editing the photo. Next, I'm going to start erase the backgrounds individually from all the flowers. So I'm choosing the eraser tool, make sure I have a brush size that is going to be optimal for this and also that the hardness is optimal and then it's just erasing away. I repeated this on all the flowers that I'm going to be using. And now you can see why I chose to have them next to my hair, because you can now see that that actually has allowed the flowers to have these natural shadows that I can use to my advantage. Now, when I start to Photoshop them all together. Using the transform tool, you can then scale your objects to the size that you want and really make sure that they look realistic. You can also go in there, rotate them, warp them, distort them, all these tools which are super helpful in doing these small tweaks and just making it look exactly right. One super helpful tool that I often use is this burn tool, which will just make the area darker. So this I used to really create those shadows because these flowers would naturally be darker where they are closer to my head. When I had cropped out all the flowers, I spent quite a good amount of time just getting the composition just right and my flower crown looking the way I wanted. Now it came time to add in the water droplets and I wish there would be some easier and quicker way to do this, 
but again I had to manually go in there and erase everything and individually do this. Now usually when I do this type of work I like to listen to a podcast or some music while I do it because it can be pretty tedious and it's maybe not the most fun but sometimes it can also be pretty meditative. Then I used again the transform tool to get my nozzle just right. So I had to rotate it a little bit. And then I actually also copy pasted in more of these droplets to make it more of an even stream. And after some fiddling around in Photoshop, making small tweaks, and then I also edited this photo in Lightroom, then here is the final result. Alright, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and maybe if you've been a little bit scared of trying Photoshop that you now feel confident with these tools. It's really, once you get the hang of it, it's really not that difficult um, as it might seem at first. There is also an app, the Photoshop Mix and Photoshop Fix apps that are free and I think all the features are free to use in it um, that you can download. So if you want to try it out on your phone first, that's maybe sometimes feels a little less intimidating. Okay, I will see you back here on Monday. Remember to use the hashtag Kika's photo challenge and come and say hi. I'm over at Kudova Kika on Instagram. Take care, have a nice evening, morning, afternoon, night, wherever in the world you are. Um, bye! There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello.